Hi, and welcome to video number two of the series of Tinkercad to Vision 360. In this case, we're going to be talking about the best practices when transitioning from Tinkercad to Vision 360. By the way, my name is Guillermo Melantoni, and I'm the lead for Tinkercad and also a product manager for Vision 360 at Autodesk. I'm also a former teacher on design and architectural design and super passionate about education and how we can inspire the next generation of creative minds to again, around design thinking, and basically creative problem solving. In this particular case, we'll cover a series of, of best practices when sending information, a model from Tinkercad into Fusion 360. We're going to talk a little bit about muscle memory and what role does it play when we work on both applications and how to use some of the features in Fusion 360 that can be very, very um, convenient when coming from Tinkercad, like the timeline, like overall customization of the UI, um, some best practices around how to work with components and bodies, and how to understand when to use solids or meshes. So let's get started. Let's go over some best practices for starting a design in Tinkercad and turning it into native Fusion 360 geometry. This is what an important mesh would look like in Fusion 360 or any mechanical software. We're talking about the image on the left. This is essentially a triangle soup, which means that the only information stored is the shape and location of all the triangles that are needed to represent the object. So you can see there are no curves, it's just a bunch of very small facets, planar facets, that, that give the illusion of a curve. When you go to a solid model, like the one on the right, what you have here is a fully mathematically defined model in which you actually have an edge that you can eventually modify. On the mesh, you cannot edit this edge because it's not actually a real edge. It's a bunch of little facets whose edges or vertices converge into something that looks like an edge. It's unusable for mechanical design without major reverse engineering, although it might be okay for rendering. Let's go over some best practices for moving from Tinkercad to Vision 360, starting with muscle memory. Let me give you an example of why this is critical. For example, if you're used, like me, to driving a manual car for many years, and you try to drive an automatic car, you might find yourself accidentally pressing the brakes really hard, since your feet are used to pressing the clutch when you're trying to change the gears. It actually happened to me and it's really not fun. That's muscle memory in action. You're not thinking about it, you're just doing what you always do. In Fusion 360's preference menu, you can go into Pan, Zoom and Orbit Shortcuts and you can choose Tinkercad from the list of options. This is great if you're used to Tinkercad's navigation. It allows you to rely on the muscle memory you've already built. Remember that on Tinkercad, for example, when you right-click, you can orbit and in Fusion, by default, if you right-click, you get menus. I also suggest that you make sure to check if the up axis is Z just look for the Z up in the default modeling orientation menu. This is what also Tinkercad shares, which is the Z up. If you see this zoom doing the opposite of what you want when you use the mouse wheel, try reverse zooming direction. All those options are inside preferences, so I really encourage you to go there at the beginning of your using Fusion 360. Here's another muscle memory related best practice. When you click on something in Tinkercad, you click on the object not the face or an edge. We actually on Tinkercad don't even think that much about the faces or edges of objects. In Fusion 360, there's a way to do this under Selection Priority. Choose Select Body Priority, which lets you click on bodies first. Then, if you want to fillet or chamfer or do an operation that requires edges or faces, Fusion 360 is smart enough to look for those edges or faces you need. This can save you a lot of time and prevent a lot of frustration when you maybe don't realize exactly what you are selecting. Another best practice related to muscle memory is to customize the user interface and expose familiar commands for the main UI. For example, box, cylinder, mirror, things you can see on Tinkercad on the shape panel or on the toolbar. The only thing you need to do is to go into the drop-down menu under every category like create or modify hover on the far right of any command and click on the three points to get to options. From this option, select Pin to Toolbar, which will expose these commands in the main UI. You can do something similar with the keyboard shortcuts. If you're used to using shortcuts in Tinkercad and, and you're using something like mirror or grouping, well, you can do the same here. 
This creates a similar environment to Tinkercad and lets you design with more confidence and also less disruption to your muscle memory. Another tip is using the history from Fusion 360. When you send something to Fusion 360 from Tinkercad, the history would be off by default. That means that if you don't know what we're talking about, you might never use it and you're missing on a lot. So the first thing you have to do is on the object browser, you click on capture design history. And this is like a super undo. If you enable the history on the timeline, you can go back to something you did a long time ago and make a change and the design will adjust according to the change. So remember, capture design history at the very bottom of on the on the on the object browser. My fifth best practice for moving into Fusion 360 is to use the help available in the learning panel. It's an interactive feature that gives you information when you click on a command. It shows you what the command does, which is very convenient, especially when you're getting started. Next, we'll talk a little bit about how to create components from bodies. When you move a file from Tinkercad to Fusion 360, each object or group of objects will become a body. Sometimes you just want to put things together in one new construct called component that moves and operates independently. Here, I created four components. If I go to assemblies or animations, I can operate without having to think about now I need to select all these bodies or something. It's not only convenient, it's necessary. Some things just won't work without components. It's also important, as we discussed at the beginning, to know when to use solids or meshes. Basically, some things will only work with solids. For example, parametric modeling or design driven by variables, creating the drawings or managing paths for animations. These only work with solid models. That's one of the reasons why you'd want to use Centrifusion as opposed to exporting an STL file. Once you start in Fusion 360 from scratch, I would still suggest you start from primitives and forms and things that are still familiar to you from your experiences using Tinkercad. And then you can move into more abstract operations like sketching and parametric sketching. Start with training wheels and move through it slowly. So uh, on this quick video, we talked a lot about a couple things, right? So about uh, keeping familiarity between Tinkercad and Fusion 360, in this case, by leveraging your muscle memory from your use of Tinkercad in navigation, in use of commands, in where do you see the commands, um, using the history and the timeline in Fusion 360, um, how to create components to, to make your work um, more efficient in, in Fusion, and also how to differentiate when to use solids or, or meshes inside Fusion, and probably almost like the TV is try to use solids as much as possible. On the next video, we'll go deeply into some of some examples about what you can do in Fusion after you know all these things. So I hope to see you on the third video of this series. Thank you.